Hello. What's up, guys? Same game freak schizo ha! Ha 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 ha! Woo! We're here to do uh, some conversating today about Blue Exorcist because I can't be trusted to put out a fucking episode. You know what pisses me off about this one? I actually watched the episode on the right day. I watched it on Friday when it came out. And then I dicked around for two days, two or three days, because I'm a fucking lazy piece of shit. Um, but yeah, we're here to review Blue Exorcist episode four. And I think part of it is because the Blue this episode really doesn't have enough of that, like, um, it, it pretty much confirms my whole statement from last time that, uh, things are about to get relatively real for this next, for the next few episodes, um, where shit starts hitting the fan. This is it. Because with the next few episodes, um, well, for the next few episodes, it's going to start hitting the fan, but we're also going to get into flashback territory, which you will understand next week, so I'm not going to go too far into it. Uh, as you saw, the premise of this episode is simple. Uh, we find out who the traitor is, literally the, the episode right after addressing it as a thing. Granted, I don't think this was ever really meant to be a mystery in the concept, in, in, in the manga. Even in the manga, it was literally a chapter by chapter. I think it lasted maybe an extra chapter because because each episode was covering about two chapters worth of material, whereas the manga was about where the manga it might have lasted like an extra chapter. And considering Blue Exorcist is a monthly series, it would have lasted longer in the manga versus the anime. But once again, it's not really a mystery, nor was it really meant to be. You can kind of see the main the main part of this is primarily just dealing with. Suguro dealing with his father issues and Ren dealing with his demon issues. Uh, which, by the way, even though Ren has now, uh, quote-unquote, gotten better control of his flames, as you see in this episode, that doesn't necessarily mean that shit's all fixed. Because, just like any other Shonen Jump character, if his emotions run high enough, he's gonna shoot out some fire anyway. Now, granted, he didn't hurt anybody. It's just, you know, uh, blue fire has a bad effect on people who were killed by it, especially when there is a famous night known as the Blue Knight, because Blue Flames went and killed everybody. So you know, it's not the most brilliant thing in the goddamn world to see again. It brings back old trauma. People don't like trauma. It's not a fun experience. If anything, it's a horrifying experience that keeps haunting you. Hey, hey, that's why it's called trauma. But the premise of the episode, we find that Mama Mushi um, is the traitor, even though Juzo has the same amount of interactions with Toto as she had. But for whatever reason, she was consorted in to the bullshit. And the thing is, is that you can tell Toto essentially lied to her about Ren's origins. They said, oh, well, they're, 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 they're you know, father, what's his name? Tasumi has been, you know, Sugro's dad's been uh, plotting with Mezzafisto, Mezzafisto, uh of harboring Ren, which is partially kind of true in a way, but not really because... Ren didn't even know he was the son of Satan, let alone they're harboring him to fight Satan. Well, that's what Mesafisto says. That whether that's actually true or not, we have yet to... Even now, we don't know. Even in the current manga chapters, we don't know if that's legit a thing or is that just something he's just fucking saying. The point I'm trying to make is is that uh, Toto used uh, enough truth mixed in with lies which puts her Mama Mushi in a position where... You have to prove it all not true or everything. It's actually a really smart, it's a very smart manipulation technique. You can't, to trick somebody by telling them an obvious lie doesn't work. But if you tell them a lie within a truth, it's easy, It's an easier pill to swallow and it's harder to disprove. Because the element is that they are harboring the child of Satan, which is Ren. That is true. Which is why Juzo reacted the way he did when he saw the blue flames come out of Ren as he hit, he decked the shit out of Sugaro. But my point is, is that that's the manipulation. And it's obvious manipulation, because you can tell, based on the conversation, that he lied to Mama, Nushi, Mama Mushi. Um, the other part of this is that you could tell Ren's having a lot of flashbacks to his dad, which was something the anime added, which I think works to great effect here, of uh, him and his dad and his situation with his father, how he really didn't get the chance to really talk to and really converse with his dad before his un before his untimely death. I want to smash my phone. I literally was that close. I was so, I was that fucking close. Just picking this motherfucker up and being like, 
Ah! That's not even a joke. I legit, I, I really wanted to smash my fucking remote. Uh, my, my, my phone. Um, and so obviously when he hears Sugar Girl say, we're not, we're not family. You're not my father. I don't ever need to see you again. Ray wasn't going to have none of that, which is what caused him to lose his emotions. And then Shura did him dirty by, I guess, putting some type of spell or mantra on him. Lock, I guess, weakening his demon powers, which are pretty much knocked him the fuck out. Um, as I said, Ren's development's only like halfway done here, because as you, as we know, he hasn't made up with everybody yet. He's only made up with Konekamaru to a lesser extent, Shima and Kaneki. We still have Shami and Sugaro to deal with, so obviously we're not done with that yet. And based off the preview, uh, he's apparently in jail. According to the preview. Mm. As far as anime and manga differences, ironically enough, this is probably the most close to manga represented episode so far. Like there's there's only my there's like one or two very, very small Mama Mushi scenes that weren't shown. And to be fair, those are more likely going to be shown next week because the it would make the episode flow together. Um there's not much, there is no real differences. Like, it's literally almost all one-to-one -one for the most part. And it's fucking beautiful. You know, what I mean? that's what we want. As, as people who read the manga, you want that one-to-one -one correlation. So when I get it, it's good. It's so good. Mm. But yeah, that's, that's really all there is to talk about. Uh, the episode was good, well animated. I think they did the punching scene with Tsuguro, great good shit dude it's a good shit so uh please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below berate me about how i'm so fucking late all the guy i did this with a cultic nine too it's like i'm picking shows that i'm interested in but not interested in enough or i'm not interested in uh, interested enough to review consistently i don't fucking know um which means i need to do this more often because apparently i'm dicking around also have some one piece videos coming soon so uh Look out for those for like the 10 people who watch this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. This has been Schizo Man, Glass of Game, Play to Win, and I will catch you all later. <laughs> That's the joy of insanity. I can take it anywhere I want to go because insanity is always with you. I need to come up with a catchphrase for this channel. I said I was going to say fuck it, but I don't, you know, the maniacal laughter only gets you so far. You know, I can only go, <laughs> only so many times. I want to do something else. We'll work on it. We'll work on it.